And it's the biases and assumptions that shape who you are. And you can never leave those biases and assumptions, right? So this concept of stepping outside the box is a silly idea because all you do is you step inside a new box, right? You can never leave your biases and assumptions. They're essential for your survival. Every time I'm taking a step, my brain has hundreds of assumptions that my legs aren't going to give way, the floor is not going to give way, right? But they also constrain our behavior. So here we have an example. We call it uh, the, your space of possibility. Right? And this space is determined by your bias and assumptions. And at any point in time, you're like the little figure in the middle. Right? And those dots represent the different possible next steps. And the size of the dots determines the value of those next steps. And notice that there's a big value step in the upper left. But you can't get there because your brain never makes big jumps. I can't get from here to the door without passing through the space in between. Your brain only ever makes small steps. And it makes small steps to the next most likely possible given your assumptions and biases. Right? But what might be possible for you is different from what might be possible from someone else because they have a different set of biases and assumptions. We all have our own unique space of possibility which is why we all make sense to ourselves, just not other people, right? So as you make a step, you just choose the next most likely possible, even though it's a less good idea. Not because you're an idiot, it's because you can't see those other ideas around you. So often when you're in conflict with someone, it's not because they disagree with you, it's they can't even see what you're seeing. And what's more, your assumptions don't just stay inside your head, right? These aren't just private to you. You project them out into the world. This screen is not blue, right? The perception couldn't be closer to you. Light exists. It's just not colored. The color is a function of your brain. You are literally coloring that screen. You're projecting the color onto it. The perception is inside here, not in the world. And what's true for color is true for more complex perceptions. So here we have two triangles in a circle, right? Completely meaningless shapes until I put them into motion. And now you're going to project a meaning onto these shapes. You hate one of those triangles, <laughs> right? You're feeling bad for the other one. You're worried for the circle, right? This is a horror film. Right? You can almost hear the soundtrack. <laughs> and we're going to stop it there. And you're all wondering what happens to the circle. And the answer is nothing. It's a circle, right? You projected all of that onto it. But what's true for color and shapes is also true for other people, right? Other people are just the sources of meaningless information. Everything I'm saying to you right now is literally meaningless, right? You're, contracting, you're creating the meaning and projecting it onto me. Because while you can measure the what of a person, the where of a person, the when of a person, you can never measure their why because you have no access to what's inside their head. So you project a meaning onto them. You color other people. Every personality that you've ever perceived is literally inside you, projected outward. You are a massive group within. And when you connect with someone, it's because your projected meaning of them happens to coincide with their projected meaning of themselves. So to understand another person is to actually understand not what they're doing, but why they're doing it.